So this weekend I took on what I feel is a pretty fun project. I always like to do more complex projects on the weekend. Uh, and so this weekend what I decided I wanted to do was I wanted to try and find a website with some cool UI design and replicate it in Power BI. So let's take a look at the website that I tried to replicate. All right, so here we are. So this is the website of a branding agency and it has some really interesting navigation. When you hover over each one of these buttons, you have kind of a gradient up here and they move slightly. And then when you click from page to page, uh, the one button or the page that's selected is shown over here. You have your content in the middle and then you have some really fun animations. Now these are CSS animations that I'm probably not gonna be able to replicate in Power BI, but what I was able to do was I was able to recreate this button and this style in a dashboard. So moving into my Power BI tenant, here we are. Here is my dashboard. As you can see, it kind of has the same style. When you roll over each one of these buttons, we have kind of that similar highlight. And then when you click on one, it moves over um, and shows the different visuals. I think this is a pretty interesting Power BI dashboard concept. It's probably not one that I would choose for most dashboards, but I mean, it was a fun design exercise. And there are two pieces of this that I think are interesting to you guys. And I'm happy to review any other piece if you were to ask me in the comments, but here's what I wanna show you. I want to walk you through these buttons, in particular, how this gradient is working and how the icon is floating up at the top here. And then the other thing that I want to walk you through is the spacing. Because if you look, um, even though this looks like really even spacing, um, because there's always two buttons on this side, side of the screen and there's one button over here, this actually is spacing that's kind of shifted all the way over, but within these two, but this 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 window here between these two sides of the two buttons, uh, you'll notice that it is perfectly even spaced here and here. And I want to talk to you guys about my approach to the math, um, you know, that it took to do that. All right, so here we are in Power BI. Um, these buttons on this side are the ones that have any kind of action. This button doesn't have an action or an on hover. So I'm not really gonna deal with this one. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna click on one of these and then the exact same settings, just with a slightly different icon, and I'm gonna walk you through the formatting settings. Okay, so first things first, they are just individual buttons. They're not a page navigator and they're not a book bookmark. I've just spaced them really nicely and then given them a one picks border. Uh, if we go and we look at the fill of the button under the button style, what you'll find is that I am filling them a nice solid color if they're not selected. And then if we go back under, I then on, on hover am filling them with that same color, but then I also have a bright yellow white gradient and that's a ping file that then is turning on on hover. So in here, I'm just fitting it, right? And what you can do in order to recreate this is basically just create a transparent gradient and then have your on hover, right, apply it. So that's pretty simple, but it's unique and it's not something that I think you'll see. The other thing that you'll kind of see as we click onto this is uh, the way that it's ro rotated. So you can rotate the entire button but that creates some oddities with the icon. So what I opted to do instead was actually just rotate only the text up, which then meant that with my icon, if I go and find it, right, I can then go, um, and it's just an SVG of like a little store here. I can then essentially center it and then use the padding function to move it all the way up. So in this case, I'm actually using a 656 pixel padding to shoot it all the way up here. So like if I were to go and drop it down, right, to 500 picks, um, and I'll maybe drop it down, oh, maybe I have too many in here. So if I go 500 picks, right, you'll see it'll start to, I guess I'm going way too far. So let's go 50. Um, 
See, there, there we go. See how much it just moved down when I go on hover. And now if I switch this back to, I think I had it at 650, right? Um, you'll see it's not moving anymore. So that's the buttons. Very straightforward, but just, you know, it, it's kind of thinking a little bit different, which I think is fun. All right, so now jumping over to the layout. Uh, we're gonna start in Power BI and then we're gonna move into Figma. But this is kind of one of those things where you have to think about what you're trying to build in Power BI before you go and you start trying to build an external tool like Figma. So if we look at the size of each one of these buttons, what you'll notice is that they are, this one's 51 picks, but they're about 50 picks, right? So 50, this one's 50. Um, this one is also 50. So I actually have probably, probably messed up. This one is supposed to be 50. But that means that we have about 150 pixels um, worth of buttons on the side. If we then go and we look at our canvas settings, we'll notice that our width, right, is 1,280. So if we open up a calculator here, right, and I'll bring this on down so we can kind of see it and do this math. We can go 1280, or let's go 50, divided by 1280, right, means that it's about 4%, okay? So that means that we really, if we're designing a Power BI background in Figma or something, for example, we, we want to take 4% of the background and put it over here and then 8% of the background and put it over here. And that is exactly what I did. So let's look at what the actual background file here looks like. So um, I am going to go into my desktop here and you're seeing not seeing this because it's off screen. But if I pull this over and here's my different backgrounds, right? What you'll notice is that here's kind of my, my narrow parts. This is 4% of the background here. And then I put 8% of the background here, right? And then within this, I made another square. And then I always like to use uh, 72 pixels between all these boxes. And so this is just math. You, you have to look at the width of kind of your the space you're working in. And then you have to go, okay, I'm gonna go 72 three times, right? And then you can start to move this over. Um, and then the overall pixel density of this is 3840. Um, so that's kind of how I built out this background with this even spacing. Then it's just a matter of placing visuals on top of this framework. All right, so that's what I wanted to cover with you guys. I'm happy to cover more. So if you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments. But, uh, I would challenge you to go and pick a website that you like and try to take just a small piece of it and rebuild it in Power BI, just like I did. It's a fun exercise. If you found this video useful, uh, please consider subscribing. If you want to you know, check out the files that I use to build this dashboard, they're going to be linked down below in my GitHub. And if you're interested in learning just a little bit more about me or my background, feel free to check out my LinkedIn which is also linked down below. I hope you have a great rest of your day.